Chapter 4, The Reason Get over here! The voice cut through the air like the twang of a ricocheting bullet. Little Willie had never heard a voice like that before. Not on this farm. He couldn't move, but Searchlight sure could. The owner of the voice barely had time to step back into the house and close the door. Searchlight barked and snarled and jumped at the closed door. Then the door opened a crack. The man stood in the opening. He was holding a small derringer and pointing it at Searchlight. His hand was shaking. Don't shoot! Little Willie yelled as he reached out and touched Searchlight gently on the back. The barking stopped. Who are you? Name's Clifford Snyder, state of Wyoming, the man said with authority. He opened the door a little farther. The man was dressed as if he was going to a wedding, a city slicker. He was short with a small head and a thin droopy mustache that reminded little Willie of the last time he drank a glass of milk in a hurry. What do you want? Little Willie asked. Official business. Can't the old man inside talk? Not regular talk. We have a code. I can show you. As little Willie reached for the door, Clifford Snyder again aimed the gun at Searchlight, who had begun to growl. Leave, leave that thing outside, he demanded. She'll be all right if you put your gun away. No. Are you afraid of her? I'm not afraid. Dogs can always tell when someone's afraid of them. Just get in this house this minute, Clifford Snyder yelled, and his face turned red. Little Willie left Searchlight outside, but Clifford Snyder wouldn't put his gun away until they were all the way into, into Grandfather's bedroom, and then he insisted that Little Willie shut the door. Grandfather's eyes were wide open and fixed on the ceiling. He looked much older and much more tired than he had this morning. You're no better than other folks, Clifford Schneider began as he lit up a long, thin cigar and blew smoke toward the ceiling. And anyway, it's the law, plain and simple. Little Willie didn't, have, didn't say anything. He was busy combing Grandfather's hair like he did every day when he got home. When he finished, he held up the mirror so Grandfather could see. I'm warning you, Clifford Snyder continued. If you don't pay, we have our ways, and it's all legal, all fair and legal. You're no better than other folks. Do we owe you some money, Mr. Snyder? Little Willie asked. Taxes, son. Taxes on this farm. Your grandfather there hasn't been paying them. Little Willie was confused. Taxes? Grandfather had always paid every bill and always on time. And Little Willie did the same. So what was this about taxes? Grandfather had never mentioned them before. There must be some mistake. Is it true? Little Willie asked Grandfather. But Grandfather didn't answer. Apparently he had gotten worse during the day. He didn't move his, his hand or even his fingers. Ask him about the letters, piped up Clifford Snyder. What letters? Every year we send a letter, a tax bill, showing how much you owe. I've never seen one, insisted little Willie. Probably threw them out. Are you sure? Began little Willie. And then he remembered the strong box. He removed the boards, then lifted the heavy box into the floor. He opened it and removed the papers. The papers he remembered seeing when he looked for money to rent the horse. Are these the letters? He asked. Clifford Snyder snatched the letters from Little Willie's hand and examined them. Yep, sure are, he said. These go back over ten years. He held one up of the letters. This here is the last one we sent. Little Willie looked at the papers. There were so many figures and columns and numbers that he couldn't make any sense out of what he was looking at. 
How much do we owe you, Mr. Schneider? Says right here, clear as a bell. The short man jabbed his short finger at the bottom of the page. Little Willie's eyes popped open. Five hundred dollars? We owe you five hundred dollars? Clifford Schneider nodded, rocking forward into his toes, making himself taller. And if you don't pay, he said, I figure this here farm is just about worth. You can't take our farm away, Little Willie screamed. And Searchlight began barking outside. Oh, yes, we can, Clifford Snyder said, smiling, exposing his yellow tobacco-stained teeth. Chapter 5, The Way The next day, Little Willie met the situation head-on, or at least he wanted to, but he wasn't sure just what to do. Where was he going to get $500? Grandfather had always said, where there's a will, there's a way. Little Willie had the will. Now all he had to do was find the way. Of all the stupid things, cried Doc Smith. Not paying his taxes? Let this be a lesson to you, Willie. But the potatoes barely bring in enough money to live on, explained Little Willie. We went broke last year. Doesn't matter, taxes gotta be paid whether we like it or not, and believe me, I don't know of anybody who likes it. Then why do we have them in the first place? Because it's the way the state gets its money. Why don't they grow potatoes like grandfather does? Doc Smith laughed. They have more important things to do than grow potatoes, she explained. Like what? Like taking care of us. Grandfather says we should take care of ourselves, but not all people can take care of themselves, like the sick, like your grandfather. I can take care of him. He took care of me when my mother died. Now I'm taking care of him. But what if something should happen to you? Oh, Little Willie thought about this. They walked over to the sled where Searchlight was waiting, Doc Smith's high boots sinking into the soft snow with each step. Little Willie brushed the snow off Searchlight's back. Then he asked, Owing all this money is the reason Grandfather got sick, isn't it? I believe it is, Willie. She agreed. So if I pay taxes, Grandfather will get better, won't he? Doc Smith rubbed the wrinkles below her eyes. You just do what I told you before. Let Mrs. Peacock take care of your grandfather and... But he will. He'll get better, won't he? Yes, I'm sure he would. But child, where are you going to get $500? I don't know, but I will. You'll see. That afternoon, Little Willie stepped into the bank wearing his blue suit and his blue tie. His hair was so slicked down that it looked like wet paint. He asked to see Mr. Foster, the president of the bank. Mr. Foster was a big man with a big cigar stuck right in the center of his big mouth. When he talked, the cigar bobbled up and down, and little Willie wondered why the ash didn't fall off the end of it. Little Willie showed Mr. Foster the papers from Grandfather's strong box and told him everything Clifford Snyder, the tax man, had said. Sell, Mr. Foster recommended after studying the papers. The cigar bobbled up and down. Sell the farm, pay the taxes. If you don't, they can take the farm away from you. They have the right. I'll be 11 next year. I'll grow more potatoes than anybody's ever seen. You'll see. You need $500. Willie, do you know how much that is? And anyway, there isn't enough time. Of course, the bank could loan you the money. But how could you pay it back? Then what about next year? No, I, I say sell before you end up with nothing. The cigar ash fell onto the desk. I have $50 in my savings account. I'm sorry, Willie, Mr. Foster said as he wiped the ash off onto the floor. 
As little Willie walked out of the bank, his, he his head down, searchlight greeting him by placing two muddy paws on his chest, little Willie smiled and grabbed searchlight around the neck and squeezed her as hard as he could. We'll do it, girl. You and me. We'll find the way. The next day, little Willie talked to everybody he could think of. He talked to his teacher, Miss Williams. He talked with Lester at the general store. He even talked with Hank, who swept up over at the post office. They all agreed. Sell the farm. That was the only answer. There was only one person left to talk to. If only he could. Should we sell? Little Willie asked. Palm up meant yes, palm down meant no. Grandfather's hand lay motionless on the bed. Searchlight barked. Grandfather's fingers twitched. But that was all. Things looked hopeless. And then little Willie found the way. He was at Lester's general store when it all happened. When he saw the poster, Every February, the National Dog Sled Races were held in Jackson, Wyoming. People came from all over to enter the race, and some of the finest dog, t dog teams in the country were represented. It was an open race. Any number of dogs could be entered, even one. The race covered 10 miles of snow-covered countryside, starting and ending on Main Street, right in front of the old church. There was a cash prize for the winner. The amount varied from year to year. This year, it just happened to be $500. Sure, Lester said as he pried the nail loose and handed little Willie the poster. I'll pick up another at mayor's, the mayor's office. Lester was a skinny but strong, wore a white apron, and talked with saliva on his lips. Gonna be a good one this year. They say that mountain man, the Indian, called Stone Fox might come. Never lost a race. No wonder with five Samoans. But little Willie wasn't listening as he ran out of the store, clutching the poster in his hand. Thank you, Lester. Thank you. Grandfather's eyes were fixed on the ceiling. Little Willie had to stand on his toes in order to position the poster directly in front of Grandfather's face. I'll win, Little Willie said. You'll see. They'll never take this farm away. Searchlight barked and put one paw up on the bed. Grandfather closed his eyes, squeezing out a tear that rolled down and filled up in his ear. Little Willie gave Grandfather a big hug and Searchlight barked again.